Hi guys, um, Deborah from House of Eclectic here. Today I am going to be walking you through how to make your own bubble necklace. So that should be really fun. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a couple shares of this and then we will get started. So um, I am Deborah. I have been blogging for about 10 years. I blog here at Housewife Eclectic. Um, sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. It's a problem to make their own bubble necklaces. So today we are going to be making a Star Wars bubble necklace because why not? Who doesn't love a Star Wars? Okay. Let me get a couple more shares going. When you hop on, let me know where you are tuning in from. I am in Salt Lake City area. Did I do that one? Hang on, just making sure that I'm... Hi guys, it's good to see you all hopping on. So we are going to be making bubble necklaces today, which are so much fun to make. My kids love making them, and they love wearing them. They're really easy. Um, I just started making them about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than that now. And I was really intimidated at first about, I don't know, I've never really like been into jewelry. It's really dark in here today. Why is that? I'm going to see if I can open the... I don't know if it will help at all, but it seems really dark in here. So I'm just in my office. This is where I do all my work and all my crafting. You can see my film set up and everything over there. Um, yeah, that didn't help at all. It's really dark in here today. Who knows why? Okay, are we ready to get started? It seems like we've got quite a few of you um, hopped on. Okay, so I'm Deborah from Housewife Eclectic. Um, I'm live here on my page, Housewife Eclectic, um, every Friday from 1.30 to 2.30 Eastern. Um, on Mondays, I'm either on Spaceships and Laser Beams or Mama Loves Food. So today we are going to be, I'm going to be walking you through how to make a bubble necklace. So I don't know if you know what a bubble necklace is, but they're kind of those... Um, those necklaces that are really popular right now that you see people wearing, especially little kiddos. So this is just a basic one. Hi, Meg. Um, so this is just a basic one. Just has beads and little little spacers. You can see there's little um, there's hair in there. That's what there is. Um, so there's little teeny beads in there, and then there's the big beads, and then there's a flower bead there at the bit, at the end. So this is one I made for my girls to wear. Um, last year, my um, brother got married, and so this is when they were flower girls in their gorgeous wedding. This is what they were wearing around their necks. So there's one. I've got a couple other examples of necklaces here, so you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing. I took them off the, I have a huge bubble necklace rack in my room, guys. It's a little ridiculous. Okay, so this is one that I made from for 4th of July yes, last year. So this one's got mostly little beads. And then, you know, it's got the few little ones. And then it's, this one also has a rose. Most of the ones I've made don't have roses. These just happen to be the two that do. Um, most of the ones that I've made are like this one. This is a Gryffindor necklace that I made. I made Harry Potter house necklaces last year for Harry Potter's birthday because why wouldn't you? So this is a Gryffindor necklace I made, and this one has a bottle cap pendant, and it's got the, the Gryffindor emblem right there in the center. So that's what we're going to be doing today, is something like with a bottle cap. But if you don't, you know, if you don't have something like a patriotic necklace doesn't necessarily have something that would go good in a bottle cap, I mean, I guess you could do a flag or something. Um, so that's when I use flowers. So it should be um, super easy, super fun to make these. Um, let me take this fan off. My desk here so I've got a little bit more space to kind of show you how this is done. So today we are going to be um, making a Star Wars necklace because my kiddos love Star Wars which is so funny to me because it like so I'm a geeky person like if you look around my office there's lots of Doctor Who and Harry Potter stuff but Star Wars was never my thing ever. In fact I'd never seen all the movies all the way through until I was an adult. And my kids just, they grabbed Star, War Star Wars and latched onto it. So, like, that is their thing. My um, sweet eight-year-old two years ago was Ahsoka for Halloween. And then last year she was Rey. And this year she's like, so what we do a big group costume every year. And so uh, two years ago her dad was a Jedi. 
and I was Darth Vader, and then she was Ahsoka, and the little one was R2-D2. And then last year, she was Rey, and the little one was BB-8. Her dad was still Jedi, and I was C-3PO with a red arm. So she's like so disappointed that our group costume is not Star Wars this year. I was like, it's time to move on and do something else. So the, our group costume this year is Nightmare Before Christmas, and I'm so excited about it. So our the little one, our three-year-old, is going to be Jack, and the eight, the eight-year-old is going to be Sally, and then I'm going to be Shock from Lock, Shock, and Barrel, and my husband's going to be Santa. I'm excited. Sorry, that got really off topic. Oh, so I was telling you how much my kids love Star Wars. So they love Star Wars. So that's what we were making today, a Star Wars necklace for my older daughter to wear. Um, if you need any help as we go through this process, I have done a written tutorial. So if you go up into the description, um, you'll be able to click on that. Um, someone told me that why I'm live, if you're on a mobile device, you can't click on it. So you're always welcome to share this video to your page so you can click on that later. Um, so let's get started. So you need some basic supplies. Uh, most of this is basic jewelry supplies. So I've linked to everything up in the in the description so you know exactly what, what we are working with here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that list so I can read it off to you guys so I can kind of tell you. Yeah, Bobby, I'm so excited. Like, So I, for a long time, was like, do I be zero? Do I be shock or anything? But then I found like this cute purple like stuff for shock. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, I wish I had like, it's like Halloween sometimes like the only time of year where I'm like, dang it. I wish I had more kids. I need like, I need a, a lock in a barrel. But, um, what? Weird. Okay. Let's find this necklace. I'm going to pull up my written tutorial so I can tell you exactly. I don't want to have to guess and tell you what size jump rings and stuff like that we're working with. So a lot of this is um, basic jewelry making supplies. Some of it, um, and then the rest is just like to the specific necklace, those specific beads. So, hi Taylor! Taylor is my sister-in-law who just had a baby. And I, like my mom is going out there today to see them and I'm dying. I wanna go out instead. But I have sent the um, cutest stuff for them. I'm so excited. I can't wait for them to see them. We have, in fact, if you've been watching my live videos the last two or three times, it's been stuff that I've been working on for their family, for their new baby. And my brother is in his PhD economics program at the University of Maryland. And he's got like his huge test coming up. So we've been, I've been making stuff for him to feel better hopefully about his well you know I can't really make him feel better about his test but maybe I can make him smile before his test so that's what we're I'm excited for I can't seriously like my mom's going tonight and I'm like call me when you get there and you like he they open all their stuff because they're probably gonna roll their eyes at me and think I'm the dorkiest person in the world but I'm okay with it okay I cannot get this thing to open okay so let me so you are going to need, um, these are the big, the, the black ones that we are going to be using. So these are the black ones we're going to be using for this necklace. Um, so those are 20 millimeter beads. So those are the chunky ones, the ones that you're going to see in like this one, the, the chunky ones. And they're not the biggest ones. See these ones, you can see that the white ones in this one are a little bit bigger. I think those are 22 maybe. So this is a 20 millimeter black bead. They're just plastic black beads. Um, so that's going to be the basis of our necklace. Then we're also going to, as our spacer beads, we're going to use these little teeny gold beads. They're called stardust beads. So little teeny gold beads. Um, and then for, um, just kind of accent, we're going to use these purple berry type beads. So those are the, those are the, um, necklace specific beads that you're going to need for this necklace. Then we're also going to use a bottle cap pendant, like I showed you with the Gryffindor one. Let me see if I have a blank. Where's my blank bottle cap pendant? So we're using a bottle cap pendant, um, which is they're really easily customizable. So this is what it looks like. Um, Courtney says she loves to make cute stuff for the and send to them. Like seriously though, I'm like Courtney. It's like ridiculous. I'm like so excited for them to open up, open up this stuff, and they're probably gonna be like, great. <laughs> like, and I'm like, oh well, man, I was excited. So, um, bottle cap pendant, 
And if you need epoxy stickers, which just look like this, they look like clear little half marbles. They're sticky on one side. Um, so these are really great for making bottle cup ne necklaces. You can always use um, Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, but that's just another step. So I'm all about making this a little bit simpler. So you are gonna need glue of some sort. And I like using um, a one inch hole punch. Um, but um, you can always cut it out. You don't necessarily need the whole bunch. Taylor, she leaves here. I'm not sure how long is the flight. Does anyone know how, how long a flight is from Utah to Maryland? She leaves here at five, I believe, is when her flight leaves. So then you are going to need beading wire. This is just thin beading wire. Um, you are going to need um, six millimeter jump rings, and which are... Let me find them for you. Oh, there's my bottle cap pendants. I know I had them. So that's a bottle cap pendant. It's got a little, um, you see the ring at the top? And then you are going to need six millimeter jump rings, which are these right here. There's just the little rings that um, you use to slide onto your phone. This is driving me crazy how dark it is in here today. I cannot figure out what is going on. And then you need crimp beads. They're, they're so little, I'm not even sure you can see that between my fingers. So that's a crimp bead. Um, and then a lobster clasp. Well, you know, even if you've never made a necklace before, I'm sure you've seen a lobster clasp. But it's what's on the end of most of your necklaces that you just buy at the store. So there's a lobster clasp. So really basic um, beading supplies. And we're going to start with the beading wire. I'm going to grab my pliers. You don't need specific jewelry making pliers or anything like that. I just use a pair that came in the kit at Ikea. Works well for me. So, um, but I'm not like, I make jewelry. F I make jewelry for my kids basically is what, um, but I don't necessarily make a ton just like in general. So, um, your wire. So this is the um, the thing that's going to change from necklace to necklace. So you need to find out what your desired length of a necklace is. So I probably, since I'm making this for a child, want it to be about maybe 17 inches long. So I'm going to go ahead and, but you want 17 inches and then you want to add about an inch and a half on either side um, because you want room to bend and make the ends the ends of the necklace. So I'm going to cut off the, so this wire is thin enough that it's really easy to cut through. I mean, you don't need any special tools to cut it. I've just been cutting it with a regular pair of scissors. Um, if you end up with thick wire, you can always cut it with the inside part of your pliers, the, the wire cutting part of your pliers. So um, we are going to go ahead and pull out my measuring tape. So you want to add, so you want to figure out how long you want it. So we're going to make it about 17 inches long. And then we are going to add an uh, inch and a half on each side. So this is for about a total of 20 inches. Maureen says the epoxy stickers changed her life. They're so easy, guys. Like, I had no, I like, I've been using Dimensional Magic for necklaces for the longest time, which is good stuff. I mean, I love Dimensional Magic, but the epoxy stickers is like stick and done. No waiting. You're, um, I don't know about you, but I have like the most impatient kids in the world, so you don't have to wait for to be done okay so I've made so I've got about 20 inches here so oop, just using a measuring tape about 20 inches so we're gonna go ahead and cut this off and then that's my wire can you even see the little wire going back and forth um so to wrap up the rest of that wire, stick it back in my box. So this is our wire. This is the start of our necklace. And the first thing we need to do is we need to close off the end. And the way you do that is you grab a couple of crimp beads, which are the little teeny tiny beads that's hard for you to see in the film. In the video, can you see the little beads in my hand? And you are going to, I like to pinch my wire with two fingers. Here so they don't go all the way to the end and fall off and I stick my beads on stick on this bead. or I drop it and lose it that works too okay. 
There we go. On my crimp tip. So I've got two little beads there on my wire. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to bend it back around to make a loop. And I'm going to stick that loop. And guys, struggles. There's my crumb beads. Okay, so then I'm going to, my crimp beads are on the bigger part of my wire, my beading wire. And I'm going to make sure that they go through on both sides. So now they're holding the, the little loop. Do you see the loop? They're holding the loop together. So now I'm going to take my pliers. And this is why they're called crimp beads. Because when I stick my pliers in there, I squish. And they're going to see it. So now they have sealed my loop. Can you see that? So um, I'm using jump rings that are already split apart. Um, if I wasn't using jump rings that were already split apart, I would have um, slid my jump ring on earlier. I'm just gonna stick it on at the end and then close it off so it's not a big deal. Um, so you can open up your jump ring and then slide it into the loop, or if you're using ones that are split like mine, you just slide it in and then close it off. If you don't, if you want to save yourself that step, just go ahead and put it in um, at the beginning. But I like to do as few things as possible. Okay, so now we are going to start beading. So I've got my thing. This will not let the beads fall off now. So we are going to start. We're using these little gold beads as spacer beads. You don't necessarily have to use a spacer bead. A spacer bead is a small thing in between each of the big ones. Like you can see this one I use, I don't know if you can even see that. There's little teeny silver beads in between the, the big pearl type beads. So, and technically this one has got like a bajillion spacer beads between the big ones. So, um, it's all up to you. I think spacer beads are fun. But, but we are going to start with a gold spacer bead. So we're just going to thread that on there. Gold spacer bead. Then we are going to add a black bead. These are 20 millimeter black beads. And we are going to add, I'm following the pattern and the written instructions that I set up for you guys. So if you want to look at that, you will see the written instructions. So then gold bead, black bead. So here we go. We've got two beads on there. Black bead, gold bead, purple berry bead. If I can find where that goes on. Okay, so that is one full pattern set right there. So gold bead, black bead, gold bead, black bead, gold bead, berry bead. So now we are going to repeat. So gold bead. Black bead, gold bead, black bead, gold bead, berry bead. Okay. It's hard to find the entrance on this. Okay. So now we are going to do mostly similar um but we're not going to add the berry bead this time because we're that's where we're going to add our bottle cap pendant so we're going to do start again so gold bead maybe there we go gold bead black bead gold bleed bead bleed not bleed bead Black bead, a uh, gold bead again, and then this is where we are going to slide our bottle cap pendant on. So you just grab a bottle cap pendant and just there's a big loop on it, and just slide it on. I've got one that's actually finished already, although I am going to walk you through how to do a bottle cap pendant. But I'm gonna, I've got the Star Wars one done. Okay. So there is one half of our necklace, we've got all the beads and our bottle cap pendant. So after our bottle cap pendant, we're gonna add, get this on the right way. There we go. 
after your bottle cap pendant, you're going to add another spacer bead. So gold bead. Perfect. Black bead. Gold bead, black bead. Gold bead, black bead. Gold bead, gold bead, gold bead, black bead, gold bead, purple bead. So gold bead, purple bead. So just watch the pattern as I'm, I, if you look in those written instructions, I have the pattern completely written out. So, and the pattern is just something I came up with. I, um, so I have made this necklace before. Um, I wanted to make something for you that I had made before so you could see the written out pattern and everything. So that's all written out for you. Okay, and then we're going to repeat this gold bead, black bead. I'm running out of gold beads. I'm gonna have to find where I got my gold beads. They're in here. So I've made a lot of necklaces. Actually, this is probably the third Star Wars necklace I made. I did a C3PO one. I did a really cute BB-8 one. Consuelo, um, I, Consuelo, I have only been actually making necklaces for about a year. Um, so about a year ago, my girls got really into these bubble necklaces, these particular necklaces, but they're kind of pricey when you go to like a, um, like a boutique or something to buy them. And so I was looking to, to try and do them at home and I thought they were going to be super hard. I was really like, the first time I made them, I was like... I don't think I can do this. I think it's really hard and everything like that. And I started, I just kind of jumped in and was following a tutorial online to do it. And by the end I was like, oh, that wasn't hard at all. Like, I'm not sure what I was so worked up over. So I've just, I'm just following the platter, the pattern, which is gold bead, black bead, gold bead, black bead, gold bead, purple bead, gold bead. Does that make sense? So the pattern is all up on that, that link that I sent you so that you guys can all see it. Okay, so there's our gold bead. And here's our purple bead. So let's add one more gold bead. And then our necklace, is it's strung. So you see, I have actually quite a bit of extra, of extra wire, which is totally fine. You're just going to trim it off. It's way better than finding out your necklace is way too short. So here we go. There is our necklace. Super cute, huh? Okay, so now we are going to need crimp beads and a lobster clasp. So let's find those crimp beads. Crimp beads and a lobster clasp. So just your basic lobster clasp. We are going to trim a lot of this wire off. So this is always, this isn't really a tricky part, but it's always the part where I'm like, if you're not a little bit careful, you're going to drop your necklace and lose all your beads and have to start over, which I've done before. So we are going to go ahead. So I've trimmed that down. I'm even going to trim it just a tiny bit more. So I've trimmed it down. I've got the wire here in my hand. Um, and I'm gonna take this the small crimp bead and slide it on. I like to do, I guess you can do two. I like, I mean, I guess you can do one. I like to do cr two crimp beads. I just feel like it's a little bit more secure. But it's your necklace, you do what you want. So then we are gonna take this lobster clasp and we are so this is how you would do the other side if you were putting on the um jump ring before you shut the loop um so i put the lobster clasp on so i've got two so i've got my fingers then two crimp beads then the lobster clasp so now i'm going to let go with my fingers i'm going to take this wire and i'm going to turn it around and stick it back through those crimp beads so don't stick it back through the um, the lobster clasp. Just stick it back through those crimp beads. 
so. And then I like to pull that kind of tight so that they're right up there by the lobster clasp. So I'm gonna hold that up, see if you can see. I've got lobster clasp, then a tiny loop, and then crimp beads. So I'm gonna crimp this before it runs away on me. I'm probably gonna crimp my fingers here. Wouldn't be surprised. Sometimes it's hard to get the, there we go. Okay, so now I've crimped that on the side. So now I'm gonna just take a pair of scissors and I'm gonna trim off this excess little piece of wire right here. If you don't trim that off, it's gonna kind of poke whoever's wearing the necklace. So let's trim that off. You don't want it to make it for a miserable necklace wearing experience. Especially if your kids are anything like mine, if they're going to get poked by a necklace, they're never going to wear it again. Okay, so I've trimmed that off. So here's our necklace, looking pretty good. Um, now let's add that jump ring on the end, and then I'm going to walk you through how to do the bottle cap pendant. So here is the jump ring. So mine, my, the ones I bought come came already split open. A lot of them are going to come just like they're a circle and you're going to have to pull them apart with pliers and then put them back together again. So I'm going to just go ahead and slide that into my loop on the other side. Take my pliers and we're just going to close that ring. Just pinch it together, pinch it good. This is the part of my necklaces that always like come apart the most, so make sure to pinch them really good. Okay, so here is our necklace. See how good that looks? Okay, so normally this is the part where you would start the bottle cap. Um, this one I had already done because I did it earlier, but I'm going to walk you through how to do a bottle cap. So... Go ahead and stick those necklaces up there and get them out of my way. Okay, so the first thing you need to do with a bottle cap necklace, with a bottle cap, you have to use a bottle cap so I can show you how to do it. I'm losing my mind. I don't need two bottle caps, just one. Okay. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your bottle cap. It just looks like this, has a ring on the end to slide onto your necklace. So at this point, it will already be on your necklace, which is great. Um, so the next thing you are gonna do is, I'm gonna slide just so you can see the computer. So the next thing you're gonna do is you are just gonna find, um, you're gonna do a Google image search. So. I mean, obviously, if you were selling these necklaces, this this wouldn't work. Like, you, you can't just, you know, um, Google Star Wars and download the logo like we're about to do. But since this is for personal use, I don't know. It's a gray area. So, we are going to do Star Wars logo. We're going to pull up images. So here we go. We've got a bunch of different ones depending on what you want. I want here with the, the yellow and the um, gold. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to my computer. Like I said, you obviously like anything Disney, Star Wars, stuff like that. That's, a, that's really going to get you into a lot of trouble if you try and sell it. So that struggles. Okay, so I've downloaded it to my... Oh, I didn't download it correctly because I stink. I saved the link. This time, we're going to save the... Actually, let's try this one. There we go. That's a JPEG. That'll be easy to work with. Okay, so we have now saved that to our computer. So these bottle caps, um, I've linked up into the description a, a good place to get a bunch of them. So um, I'm now going to open this with Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, you can open it with a, an easier 
photo editing program. You're just cropping it, so you just need some sort of photo editing program. Um, a lot of phones even have a native program on them that you can crop with. So I'm just opening Photoshop right now. It's a big program. It takes a minute. Okay, so Photoshop is open. We are now going to open our image, which is right here. So now that it's in here, we are going to want to resize it. So it is four inches by four inches, which is way too big for our um, pendant. So I've now resized it so it's one inch by one inch. Now we're going to go ahead and save it. Um, I wonder, I don't know if I've ever tried to print. Okay, it says there's a reason why I've never tried to print from Photoshop. Um, okay, so now it's saved been all resized and now we are going to print it nope I don't want a full page photo I don't want to fit picture to frame hmm maybe this is not the best way to print it this is where I always run into trouble like what, how do you, you know, like how exactly is the best way to print it? A lot of times I print it with Picasso, which is an old Google program, but I like it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and print it. Um, we wanna print on cardstock. Cardstock's gonna give you a little bit more stability when you're working with the image. Let me see if I've got cardstock over here. I do not. I have to hide my paper because <laughs> my kids love paper. Which is good. I'm glad that they love to the color and everything like that. Last year, I seriously gave one of my kids a ring of paper for Christmas. I mean, it wasn't her only Christmas present, but she was happier about the ring of paper than she was about most of the toys. So, um, so cardstock in my printer, which is down on the ground because I crap so much on my desk, I didn't have room for it on my desk anymore. It's on the ground. If I can burn. Okay. Awesome, so I'm gonna go ahead and print this. What? Whatever. See, I told you printing's always like the the wild card. And I always tell my husband the fastest way to make something go wrong is to do it live. We are going to print this. Come on. Maybe sometime in the next 30 years. Print. Print, print, print. Okay, I just want you to let me print it the way I want to print it. That's always where I run into my snags. So I'm actually pulling it back into Photoshop. Here, I'll train you guys so you can see. So I'm pulling it back into Photoshop right now. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do File New. Sure. And we are going to give this a black background. It's probably a way easier way to do this. Don't show my husband. <gasps> no. So let's give ourselves a black background. Latin. Okay, now we are going to add our little girl on her. There we go. Except let's I'll place our logo first. Then let's use our little color dropper tool. Please don't fall off to get that exact black. I'm making things way more complicated than they need to be, guys. Okay. 
That's how I roll. Okay. Now we've got lots of black around the image so that um, we want, aren't going to end up with any white edges. Okay. Now we'll print it. Oh man. Okay. So I've walked you through pretty much the entire um, There we go. Okay, so now we are going to print this. Okay, print. Okay, maybe, maybe this is not going to work, guys. They Somehow my printer got deleted off my computer. So that's super irritating. Okay, so I'm just going to have to walk you through it, which is fun and irritating. So we would print it on this cardstock right here. So pretend we've got our image on it. Then you can always just cut around your image. I like to use the hole punch so that I can just go ahead and punch it out. So this is a one inch hole punch. So I punch it out. I have my perfect little circle. So I am going to stick it in. So it's going to fit perfectly in there. You're going to have to push it in a little bit because it is the same size as the, the entrance. So there we go. We've got it in there. Um, so the first thing you are going to want to do, maybe, I'm not going to punch another one. <laughs> We're having all sorts of struggles all of a sudden. Okay. So we've got this. We've got our circle. We have our epoxy stickers. So you are going to take, you want to try and touch, you'd want to try and not touch the back of the epoxy sticker because then it's going to leave your fingerprints on it and you're going to be able to see it on your necklace. So you're going to peel the epo epoxy sticker off, hold it by the edges, and you are going to stick it right on top of your circle. So now we have an epoxy, and I'm not wasting an epoxy sticker. This is one that peeled off and my little girl was touching, so I'm not feeling bad about that. So now it's on the top of the epoxy sticker. And what we are going to do is we are going to take glue. We are going to glue the back of this. Um, I like to use like tacky glue and just glue the back of it, and then you're going to stick it right there in the center. Wait for it to dry, and you have a bottle cap necklace. How easy is that? Does anyone have any questions? Anything I can answer about how to make a bottle cap necklace? So I am Deborah. I blog at Housewife Eclectic, which I have done for almost 10 years, which is crazy that it's been that long. Um, so I do a lot of geeky crafts, a lot of Star Wars, a lot of Doctor Who, a lot of um, Harry Potter, because why not? My daughter just, I, so last night, guys, I'm so excited about this. I have been begging her to read Fable Haven, because I thought, I don't know if you've read Fable Haven, I thought it was pretty good. It was fun. I mean, it's definitely middle grade, but that's what she is. She's middle grader. And, um, so finally I told her, I was like, if you read Fable Haven, if you read the whole series, I will give you $10. And she was like, oh, fine, maybe, sure. So she starts it. And last night she, um, got to the point where they discover that all the butterflies and dragonflies in the yard are not butterflies and dragonflies. They're fairies. That's not really spoilery because that's pretty much what the whole series is about. Um, and she like ran out of her room and was like, I know I'm out of bed. Please don't get me in trouble. I just had to tell you that they're, that they're fairies, mom. They're fairies. And I was like, see, I knew you would love this book. Like, so anyway, the point about that whole saga was to tell you that I'm hoping to add, I'm sure she's going to want me to add some fable hoods and stuff too. So this is our Star Wars necklace that we just made today. So if you are just tuning in, go ahead and share this video to, our, to your page and then you'll be able to skip around and see what you need to see later to make the necklace or there's written instructions up in the description. So um, I'm Deborah. I'm here on Housewife Eclectic Live, 1.30 to 2.30 Eastern Time every Friday. And on Mondays, I am either on Spaceships and labor, Laser Beams or Mama Loves Food. I'm all, almost always doing crafts. There's lots of people who do food, so I like to do something a little different. So almost always doing crafts. I like to make fun shirts and necklaces. And um, I'm excited. I think on Monday, I'm going to show you guys how to make a galaxy shirt. So that'll be fun. Um, but
that if you want to um, go ahead and go up to the description, give my page a like, you'll be able to see my next show. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys later.